morning students now today we are going to learn chapter number 6 combustion and flame now what is combustion combustion is a chemical process in which a substance reacts with oxygen and generates heat in the process in simple words we can say the process of burning of a substance in the presence of oxygen is called combustion when a substance burns it gives off heat and light and in mo in most cases and sometimes we get sound also right combustion is a chemical change in this type of chemical change oxygen is added into the substance <coughs> getting burnt the addition of oxygen is also called oxidation thus we can say that a combustion is chemically oxidation right we cannot get back the original substance after completing combustion now what is combustible substance and non combustible substance some substances is like paper kerosene diesel petrol coal burn readily right they are called combustible substance while some others like metal glass ceramics do not burn or catch fire easily they are called non combustible substance as it is inflammable substances the substances which have low ignition temperature and catch fire easily they burn with a flame for example petrol lpg gas etc now next point why do we say that food is fuel for our body <coughs> when we eat food it gets broken down into simpler substances which react with oxygen and generate energy or heat hence food is referred to as fuel of our body and by which we get energy to do our work now what are the condition necessary for combustion to take place first a combustible substance second presence of air or oxygen and third combustion requires heat right now first a combustible substance yeah we can say requires fuel combustion only takes place when there is a fuel which produces heat and light when it catch fire for example petrol and diesel a fire cannot start without a combustible substance second combustion requires air presence of air or oxygen is necessary the second condition for combustion to occur is the presence of oxygen for complete combustion to take place oxygen should be present in sufficient quantity right we can prove it with the help of the following experiment a candle keeps burning in open air however we cover it with a glass or a jar it only burns until the oxygen inside it is consumed once the oxygen is exhausted the flame of the candle flickers off got it now next one combustion requires heat the substance must reach its ignition temperature to catch fire ignition temperature is the lowest temperature at which a substance catch fire or starts burning is known as what ignition temperature some substances we have see, we uh, we have which have very high ignition temperature they do not catch fire easily while some substances like sodium phosphorus catch fire very with the very low ignition temperature when exposed to air matchstick is one of the good example is the most common tool used to produce fire 
it is used in almost every home right have you ever think why it cannot produce fire on its own most of you must have seen your mother or father burning a matchstick by rubbing it on the side of a matchbox the process of burning a matchstick is not easy as it is seen the head of sticks contains a mixture of antimony trisulfide and potassium chloride the rubbing surface of the matchbox contain powdered glass and very little red phosphorus when the stick is rubbed against the surface some of the red phosphorus gets converted into white phosphorus which reacts with potassium chloride to produce enough heat to ignite antimony trisulfide in this way the matchstick starts burning when it attains ignition temperature got it now how do we control fire <coughs> it is also one of the very important point by using water by using carbon dioxide as a fire extinguisher as well as by cutting yeah removing the com combustible substance yeah cutting off the air supply yeah cooling down the combustible substance below its ignition temperature are the some by the ways by which we can control fire we can control the fire by one or more of the following removing the fuel cutting off the air supply or oxygen supply cutting off heat or lowering the temperature of the fuel see here fire extinguisher cylinder is so, uh, sh shown right by which we can extinguish the fire now we'll explain you by using water which is the most common fire extinguisher it cools down many combustible substance below the ignition temperature in addition the water vapor from surrounded the combustible substance and cuts of the air supply water can be used to put out fires caused by wood or paper although it cannot be used to put out fires caused by the oil petrol kerosene etc because they are lighter than water and keep floating on water and thus keep the fire burning water should also not be used to put off a fire caused by electrical equipments as water is a good conductor of electricity and can thus cause electrocution right next one is by using carbon dioxide as a fire extinguisher see the given cylinder which is already of the what carbon dioxide carbon dioxide can be used to extinguish the fire caused by petrol oil kerosene etc it is already heavier than oxygen and covers the combustible substances like a blanket thus cutting off the contact between the combustible substance and air it can also be used to extinguish fire caused by electrical equipments because it does not conduct electricity and thus there is no danger of electrocution in cylinders of fire extinguishers carbon dioxide is stored in liquid form under high pressure when released from the cylinder it comes out in vapor form and expands enormously in volume and cools down thus carbon dioxide extinguishes a fire by cutting off the air supply and by bringing down the temperature of the combustible substance simon tensely now by using a blanket when a person's clothes catch fire a blanket should be wrapped around his body to cut off air supply thereby extinguishing the fire understood now types of combustion there are different types of comb uh, combustion like slow combustion rapid combustion spontaneous combustion and explosion first of all 
स्लो कम्बर्शन शम कम्बर्शन प्रोसेस आर वेरी स्लो द प्रोसेस ऑफ रस्टिंग एंड डाइजेशन ऑफ फूड आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ स्लो कम्बर्शन नाउ रैपिड फ्रॉम द वर्ड्स ओनली वी कम टू नो वॉट डू यू मीन ऑफ हीट सम सब्सटेंसिस कैच फायर वेरी क्विकली सच टाइप ऑफ कम्बर्शन दैट टेक्स प्लेस वेरी फास्ट विद द एमिशन ऑफ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ हीट एंड लाइट इज कॉल्ड रैपिड कम्बर्शन एग्जाम्पल बर्निंग अ मैच टिक्स और अ लाइटर इज ब्रॉट नियर अ गैस बर्नर एल पी जी गैस राइट आर द गुड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वॉट रैपिड कम्बर्शन स्पॉन्टेनियस कम्बर्शन कम्बर्शन इन विच अ मटीरियल बर्स्ट इन टू फ्लैम सडनली विदाउट अप्लाइंग हीट एग्जाम्पल फोस्फरस विच बर्न्स एट रूम टेम्परेचर स्पॉन्टेनियस कम्बर्शन ऑफ कॉल डस्ट ऑफ अन कोज इज एक्सटेंडल फाइज इन कॉल माइंस हीट फ्रॉम द सन और लाइटिंग लाइटनिंग मे बी मे ऑल्सो कॉज स्पॉन्टेनियस फॉरेस्ट फायर्स राइट फॉरेस्ट फायर्स आर ऑल्सो द गुड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ स्पॉन्टेनियस कम्बर्शन एंड लास्ट वन इज एक्सप्लोजन वेन अ मटीरियल बर्स्ट सडनली टू प्रोड्यूस हीट लाइट एंड साउंड ऑन द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ हीट और प्रेशर इट इज कॉल्ड एन एक्सप्लोजन एग्जाम्पल क्रैकर्स एंड फायर ऑक्स विच रिलीज अ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ गैस टू सो दिस टाइप ऑफ कम्बशन इज कॉल्ड वॉट एक्सप्लो सर नाउ नेक्स्ट इज फ्लेम फ्लेम हैज अ डिफरेंट जोन राइट नाउ वॉट डू यू मीन वॉट डू यू मीन ऑफ फ्लेम फ्लेम इज अ हॉट ग्लोइंग बॉडी ऑफ इग्नाइटेड गैस विच इज प्रोड्यूस when something is on fire all materials do not burn with a flame the substances which vaporize during burning give out flames for example candle when you burn the candle wick the wax around it melts and vaporizes the vaporized molten wax moves upward through the wick due to the capillary action these vapors burn in air and produce a flame see materials forming flame on burning see the candle forms flame while magnesium does not form a flame as well as camphor forms flame now structure of a flame see it's mainly divided in the three jo- different zones the innermost zone which is known as what dark zone the middle zone which is known as what luminous zone and third the outermost zone right mainly it is divided in three so let's see the very first to be discuss about the innermost zone which is also known as what dark ya black zone it consists of unburnt wax vapors as no combustion takes place here due to lack of oxygen due to this reason it is also known as zone of no combustion this is the least hot zone of the flame then after middle zone yeah luminous zone so yeah we can say what yellow zone yellow in color and is moderately hot in this zone partially partial combustion takes place right third is outermost zone is blue in color and is the hottest part of the flame this is also the zone where complete combustion takes place right <coughs> next what is a fuel fuel any substance that burns to produce heat and light energy is called fuel right gives what fuels are substances that gives us heat which we use for domestic and industrial purposes such as food kerosene and petrol what will an ideal fuel or good fuel look like 
ideally a good fuel is one which has proper ignition temperature neither too high or too low does not produce undesirable or poisonous substances and cause pollution does not leave behind much ash and is cheap means cheaper easy to available readily available produces a large amount of heat or have high calorific value has a moderate rate of combustion is easily controllable can be started or stopped as needed is easy to handle and transport and has low moisture content so that it burns easily now fuel efficiency fuel efficiency of a fuel depends on its calorific value now what do you mean of calorific value the calorific value of a fuel depends on the amount of heat produced by complete combustion of 1 g of a fuel the unit used to measure the calorific calorific value of a fuel is kilojoule per kilogram right it we measure it 1 g so kilojoule per gram and if will measure in 1 kg then 1 kg per kilo kilojoule per kg hydrogen has the highest calorific value while cow dung has the lowest calorific value see here in this table should we come to know right now what are the harmful effects of burning fuels carbon fuels like wood coal and petroleum release as and fine unburned carbon particles in the air which can cause respiratory diseases like asthma these fine particles are referred to as a suspended particle particulate matter spm right as well as which is causes also another lung diseases right now incomplete combustion of fuels such as coal gasoline and other fossil fuels releases carbon monoxide gas which is very poisonous and can kill people sleeping in the room where coal is burning co2 combines with hemoglobin in our body uh, blood to form carbo oxy hemoglobin and renders it incapable of transporting oxygen these fuels also release unburned hydrocarbons may of which many of which are carcinogenic means causing causes cancer and cause serious health hazards burning of coal in factories and power plants also produce gases like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide which reacts with oxygen present in the air to form nitrogen trioxide and sulfur trioxide these oxides dissolve in rain water to form sulfuric acid and nitric acid which fall down in the form of acid rain acid rain harm statues buildings soil plants etc and last one is global warming carbon burning of coal and diesel releases sulfur dioxide gas which is corrosive in nature and causes irritation in nose throat and airways it also causes shortness of breath wheezing and feeling of tight nails around the chest petrol engines release gases oxides of nitrogen this sulfur and nitrogen oxides dissolve in rain water to form acids and cause acid rain carbon dioxide released by most fuels during combustion is causing an imbalance in the atmosphere deforestation is also leading to a situation where there are fewer few, fewer trees to absorb the carbon dioxide this is leading to the global warming carbon containing fuels release the carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas 
it has the ability to trap heat the excessive use of such fuels lead to increase in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere due to this the average temperature of earth increases this increase in the temperature is called global warming it results in melting of glaciers which consequently leads to rise in the sea level that may cause floods in the coastal area so like this way are the some harmful products obtained from burning of fuels so all of you understood good bye